Uh, good evening, this is Charlie Foskett, Chair of the Finance Committee. Permit me to confirm that all the members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Grant Gibeon. Here. Uh, Shane Blundell. Here. John Ellis. Micaiah Healy. Here. Mary Margaret Franklin. Here. Arif. Yes. Here. Jonathan Wallach. Here. Brian Beck. Peter Howard. Uh-oh. Peter Howard? Uh-oh. <laughs> um, Shailene Pokris. Daryl Harmer. Sorry, I am here. here. Shailene, you're here? Yep. Thank you. Daryl? Here. John Dice? Here. Alan Jones is here. here. Okay. Uh, Annie LaCourt? Here. Bill Keller? Uh, Al Tassi's not here. He's going to be late. Uh, George Koser? Here. Christine Deschler? Here. Dean Carmen? Here. And David McKenna? Here. Okay, so who's not here? Um, Alan Tassi's not here. Brian Beck is not here. Peter Howard, is he here yet? No, John Ellis is just signing in now. Okay. So, um, Annie, can you act as uh, Secretary Pro Tem? I can try. Thank you very much. Hopefully, Peter will be with us shortly. So, um, <clears throat> so the, the main budget that we'll do tonight is the water and sewer budget. Um, and I believe that Grant is ready to do that. I've seen some documents wending their way into SharePoint. And then um, there are a number of uh, articles that we want to, uh, more articles that we like to try to finish off. I outlined most of them in the, that little document that I sent out a little bit earlier. Um, if there's anything that anybody wants to discuss about the school budget tonight, we can certainly do that. But I think Dean is going to be, Dean and Shane and uh, Charlene are going to be doing some, some work on that. And that I'm also expecting there's going to be some discussions between um, the superintendent and the town manager. And probably we'll have some more information on Monday. So my, my thought is to push that, push that off until then. Um, and then we'll have a discussion of, uh, from the working groups. So um, Liz Diggins, you're here? Yes, I am. And we have no speakers tonight, right? We don't. Okay, thank you, thank you. So this open meeting of the Arlington Finance Committee is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we've been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of the public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment only in writing by email to ediggins at town.arlington.ma.us.com. This meeting is convening by video conference via the Zoom, Act, Zoom app as posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join and comment. Please note the meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference accordingly. Please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to share your screen, screen share your computer. Anything you're broadcast may be captured by the recording. Meeting materials have been provided to members of this body and are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. The chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members inviting each by name or in general to provide any comments, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. 
For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy uh, with other members, please do so through the chair. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. Thank you very much. I wonder if I'll have that memorized by the time <laughs> it's over. Okay, um, so has Peter shown up? No. No. All right, well, we'll uh, skip over the minutes then and um, go directly to the water and sewer budget. Grant. Oh, thanks, Charlie, for like getting right to it. <laughs> um, well, you know, the good news is um, the meeting's being recorded. So Peter is uh, in luck and Annie's catching a break. <laughs> I'm going to take a few notes anyways, at least for the votes. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you can relax during this presentation. So, um, so water and sewer is a um, enterprise budget, and, and uh, I usually start off by calling it sewer and water because that's just sort of how the whole budget presents itself. is just not as intuitive as other budgets do. Um, it's listed the sewer sewer components come first in the budget before the water. Um, probably more alphabetically uh, than logistically. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to mention is um, we uh, have a, you know, a deal with the MWRA, but I always like to kind of point out that I think we have the best water period um, in terms of its quality and in terms of its availability. We, this region, we don't get hurt by drought. As we aren't affected by it as many other areas, and the quality is just just excellent. So uh, I think it's the best bargain on the planet. It's the most undervalued commodity is, is clean water. Um, so let's get to the expense and the, the paying part of it. Uh, so the budgets, uh, the, the water and sewer or sewer and water department uh, is divided or uh, let's call it organized into four, four divisions. Um, they start with the sewer collection system, um, which by the way, contains this, a very important D, DPW indirect charges and uh, the offset charges uh, indirect to the other departments in the, um, in the town as well. Grant, can I interrupt you for one second? Are, are you Absolutely. dealing from the manager's budget book or are you dealing from a, a document that you have um, modified? Oh, it's um, off, the, off the budget. Uh, that's how it starts off, sewer collection system on page one. I'm sorry. We're going to start on page 164, folks, of the budget. And you know what? <laughs> if you want, we can share my screen. I, I think that would be a good idea, yes. Um, now, I have been having some difficulty getting um, the document to appear on this Windows 8.1. And I'm not sure if it's appearing now or if it's just file manager. It's just file manager. All right. Um, would Annie be so kind or someone be so kind to bring the budget up? Um, Alan, can you do that, Mr. Jones? I had worked with this earlier on this PC and thought that I had gotten it, but I guess. Um, the documents are in SharePoint too. Yes. Um, but if Alan's got them and can share them, I'm taking trying to take some notes. So there Great. we go. Thank okay. you, Alan. Go ahead, Grant. Okay. Yeah, let me get back to the. Okay. So the first one, as I mentioned, no, let me get to the. Sorry about this. Not my first rodeo, but okay. So we're starting on page um, 164 with sewer collection system. Um, now it's going to be kind of interesting here because uh, I don't. We're going to have to also work off of that other handout, uh, the consolidated um, worksheet that I, I I wrote up. We might be able to do it uh, logistically in order though. So, so the first uh, section of this is the DPW staff indirect charges. And this is the first year it's been appropriately titled as indirect charges. It used to appear as salary and wages. Um, this represents 
Um, and I'll, these, these indirect charges, I'll explain on the, on the handout. Um, and the next section, the indirect charges for the sewer uh, section are also um, explained. This is part of the offset, offset mechanism. Um, in essence, what happens is um, the sewer and water department only has one division that actually employs people. Uh, and it's not the sewer collection system. It's not the water, system, water um, sewer properties as well. Um, what these are is uh, these pay, or this is uh, the salaries that all the other DPW divisions that um, do work for the water division, these are their expenses. Um, they take the total expenses and they uh, divide it by half and 50% or half of it goes to the sewer collection system staff indirect charges. And the other half goes to the uh, water sewer properties, but there they call them salaries and wages. So this is a constant and it's a function of the offset mechanism as are the rest of the next section, the indirect charges. Um, the only amounts, the, there's the workman's comp cost and unemployment compensation. These are just, these are amounts are constant every year and these amounts are just, uh, Sandy calls them um, placeholders. Um, I call them uh, probably required fields when they implemented this legacy system long ago and they had to be plugged in with something. So these are the amounts they plugged in. They don't really change anything. They're pretty immaterial to, to the extent of the budget. Uh, and the next ones, these actually represent the offsets that we've seen in the other budgets, the retirement costs, the health benefits, and the indirect costs. The indirect costs um, all of these represent 50%, by the way, in the 2022 budget. These are all 50% of the total expenses because the other half is shared in the water sewer properties indirect charges section as well. Um, the indirect costs represent the uh, uh, salaries paid to the non-DPW um, related uh, work. That would be the selectman, that would be the town manager, uh, postage and all of the other items that I've actually listed in the consolidated worksheet, worksheet detail. Um, so if we want, um, I'm going to try at this point, if I may, um, try and share my screen. And are we looking at the uh, consolidated FY22 water sewer and water budget amounts document? Yeah. Can yes, someone we are. confirm that for me, please? Yes. Okay, thank you. I can't see everybody. So, um, so what this represents is this is a document you can follow along on the other, um, um, on the budgets, where if you take a look, this is uh, at the uh, consolidated. This doesn't appear anywhere. This is a document I just uh, prepared for. Um, uh, presentation purposes and to frustrate myself most of the day with uh, trying to print it. Um, so as we see, I have the retirement costs and you, I have the page references to the budget book, page 154, the retirement budget. And that's the full amount is the 1,425,766. And this is divided by half and half of that appears in the uh, aforementioned budget in the indirect charges on the retirement cost. Half of it is 712. 883. That holds true for the next two lines as well. And then in this next section, subtotal indirect charges, sewer and water, I've tried to explain it and listing out. And this also serves as a cross check to make sure all the, all the offsets are included and that they add up right or add up correctly. So if we see on the right here, we see the budget details and sources. We see the engineering department. I have the page numbers in the budget reference that somebody wants to um, you know, double check or cross check. I'm fine if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so these are all the um, uh, listed here and the total of, the, of this is a uh, million one eighty six nine four forty three, And you'll see that represents half Um, of the indirect charges, 
which should be the 593.472. And there's a round, $1 rounding you know, position in that. Um, that holds true, same for the offsets. I've done that down here, I'm sorry, the health benefits, um, where the total health benefits, uh, the total um, health offset amount is actually comprised of more than just the uh, water and sewer portion. I have it listed as DPW, it should be water and sewer as 647402. And if you see that line matches up with the health benefits line, that is also divided by two and split amongst those other two budgets, the um, um, sewer collection and the water sewer properties. Uh, and then the indirect cost I've listed in this column over here, where we have the select board and the town manager and the HR and all these other departments that um, do work for the uh, water sewer division, um, but aren't directly controlled by the budget. Um, that's essentially in a nutshell, uh, the offset mechanisms. Um, if we look down in this page here, what I did was um, I clipped out pieces of the uh, individual budgets, the sewer collection system and the water sewer properties. So we can see that the actual amounts here, 593.472, when they're totaled up, they equal the, um, the grand total that's up in the consolidated version. Um, so I think, I hope that that um, can clarify or at least provide a scorecard for how these offset mechanisms um, uh, coincide or, or, or work. Grant, uh, this is Charlie. Can I yes, uh, ask, uh, ask if you could just confirm something for the committee? So in summary, what you have done is checked all the offsets and all the budgets across the, the manager's budget book um, against the water and sewer usage so that you know that those offsets are correct. Uh, yes and also for the summary portion of the budget as well. Thank you. And if we can just breeze by that and go back to um, sharing the, was it Alan um, that you had the um, uh, budget up? If we could go back to that. And I'll, did I stop sharing my screen? No, I did, okay. Thank you, thanks for playing along. Uh, so, okay, if you want to go back up to page 164, please, Alan, uh, back to the, um, back to the original. Thanks. So where we last left off is I just explained the indirect charges of uh, the sewer. And uh, that will also be explained in the um, other section of sewer and water, or at least, at least depicted. So here we come to the real part of the budget. Um, and this is titled sewer collection and expenses. And part of the difficulty with this, again, not straightforward, and I have volunteered to help with the line items, where it says subtotal sewer collection, it should say subtotal total sewer collection expenses, because that would then correspond with the summary at the bottom of the budget. Needless to say, we can work, for, work past that. Um, contracted services, if we look at the budget, uh, only, only increased 5,000. From the previous year, however, there is a. I did make a note and question about why the um, um, uh, budgeted amount is a bit higher than the actual amount. Um, I did get a response um, from uh, Mike Rademacher, and um, he wrote it. I could read it. Um, not happy with it completely but I might not understand it completely either. Um, he says essentially that the number does fluctuate from year to year and that he likes to keep it on reserve for emergencies should we need contracting help in making a repair. <coughs> um, and I can see in the sense of water and sewer that uh, it is good to have a little bit uh, of a buffer there because an emergency is in fact an emergency and needs to be addressed right away. Um, now, the rest of the budget's uh, pretty flat. Um, the electricity he has uh, um, at 20, at the same amount from year to year. Uh, yeah, they tend to spend a little less of it. And 
Again, sort of the same logic involved with that. Then to correspond that in this particular budget, the materials and supplies, that seems much more even at 24, and it's actually less than he spent, or less than his department has spent in the, um, in the previous years. The following line is the MWRA assessment and sewer, and uh, that's what it is. It's not like there's any budgeting magic involved with that. Um, again, that's also summarized in the bottom of the port. If you want to scroll down to page 165, uh, please, Alan. Um, so the next uh, section we have here uh, is the, the debt service and the, um, and the capital part. And this is pretty constant as well and dictated by um, the MWRA loan programs. Um, the, <clears throat> the next section is the sewer rehab. And this is a section that uh, um, might have liked to have voted the warrant articles first, but um, this is where they uh, have $100,000 uh, kept for when they do their uh, sewer rehab, but they also ask, um, we also ask in the uh, articles, uh, I think for the sewer, it's going to be 800000 And that's the amount that they uh, um, typically get uh, for sewer rehab. Um, so the next section is a, a different form of a sewer. This is the storm sewer collection system. And again, this should be titled storm sewer collection expenses because it's summarizing the expenses section on the summary. Um, so the contracted services seem to be a, a bit higher. Um, and uh, the question on that was, uh, was raised. And um, I think part of the bit with the storm sewers Um, was that he, uh, the big answer on this was, we expect these fund requirements to steadily increase as a result of stricter DEP regulations um, related to stormwater. So they're saying it's going to be more expensive to, um, to maintain the, the, the storm sewers based, based on regulations. Um, any questions on any of this? Uh, or if the chair prefers to wait until the end of the budget. Uh, why don't we wait till the end of the budget, um, Grant, and then we can come back and, and ask uh, particular questions. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Alan, if you wouldn't mind uh, scrolling down to 166. Thanks again. So this is the uh, water distribution system. So we've covered two of the two divisions already of the sewer section. Um, and this is the water distribution system. Now here, this section is the real salary and wages. These are um, really people that work for them. And um, we can look at the salary section um, next. They did do some um, readjusting um, where their person retired and they're not planning on replacing him um, I think part of this is, again, gearing more toward using contracted services. Um, and then we can look at the um, uh, detail of that at the end of the budget as well. Um, the next section is the indirect charges. And these are the um, section, these are the uh, the offsets that I that are explained in the consolidated um, handout or uh, reference sheet, uh, and all of those correspond uh, to the section under the um, sewer collection systems as well. There's 50 percent of that. Um, now the next section is the water distribu water distribution expenses, and should total up into the expense sections of the summary. And we have the contracted services, which has um, a bit of an increase. And again, it's expected to use more um, contracted services. Um, and uh, one of the notes in this uh, particular thing was um, uh, 
in, in one of them. Again, it's, they, we're expecting, um, oh, they're also in the coming years going to be using an outside vendor supported billing software. Um, so they expect this, they might be a little less in the coming years once they start using that. Um, at least that was the response. Uh, okay, so that um, covers the water distribution expenses. Uh, the rest of the expenses, I'm sorry, the rest of the expenses are, are pretty flat and they're the same. Materials and supplies um, seem to be a little, uh, trying to look at my notes here for where I had this. And hang, bear with me for a moment because I'm, there we go. Materials and supplies budgets are significantly higher in the last two years. And the reason why it was, was explained as we expect greater expenses in this line as we embark on replacing our meter reading technology over the next several years. I can't do it. Jane, I can't. I've, I've got to try to follow this. I'm can't sorry. Can't you just come quickly and unmute it? Hey, Pete, you might want to mute. I muted Pete. Um, so you can continue. Mr. Chair, should I? Go, go right ahead, Grant. You're on mute, Grant. All right, somehow I was on mute, I guess, okay. Are we are now? All right. All right. Um, so the line was um, on materials and supplies is that uh, they expect greater expenses because they're replacing their meter reading technology over the next several years. Um, he has said, FY21, we expended 135,000, which is higher than the previous year. All righty, uh, if we may go on to the next page. All right. So now while uh, we're still in the uh, water distribution system category. Um, this next line is the MWRA assessment for the water. Um, the following lines for the water distribution system, I'm sorry, so that's the total, I love how this is organized. So that represents the total of the uh, expenses, assessments, and capital assigned to the water distribution system. The next section is the water sewer properties um, section. Um, and I think this is really the division that was created so we could put another salaries and wages here. And this is the other 50%. They need to split it between water and, and sewer or sewer and water. So this is the section in the water that's 50% of it. Um, the next section is the uh, rehabbing the 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 water mains, and this is similar to the rehabbing of the sewer mains uh, in that there's a warrant article that they uh, are also proposing, um, and this one's for 1.3 million, uh, but where they get the bulk of the money. Uh, the next section is the um, MWRA loan program, looks uh, trying to um, pay down or accelerate the um, payment of the debt, draw down the debt as one would say. Um, next section is the expenses section of water and sewer properties. And, you know, I kind of point this out because it sure it'd be easier for whoever ever does this in the future. Um, because all these lines tie into expenses, and they're not even identified as such. So it does help the person have the subtotal. Um, so this is the, um, these are pretty constant here is electricity, natural gas, and they're um, all budgeted the same, and they're relatively close to what the actuals are. Um, the next section is the principal and interest of the uh, water debt service. 
Uh, still on sewer properties, if we go to the final page of uh, uh, this 168, um, back up one, sorry, Alan. Um, these are some capital uh, accounts. No, one more, this one, there we go, thank you. Um, capital accounts is the hydrant replacement program, um, which is, we're budgeting half as much as last year. Um, and the um, water capital equipment fund. Um, so these are all the capital equipments. And Alan, if you want to please scroll down to the, I believe this is the first summary page. Okay. So these are all the summary items. And uh, again, it's more of a, um, a reconciliation exercise or a tick and tie exercise, but so the personal service summary should equal all the salary and the wages. That would mean the actual um, wages and the indirect wages, the ones that are assigned to non uh, to DPW salaries. Um, the expenses summary is the sum of all those items that I mentioned should have the word uh, line items expenses after them. Uh, the MWRA assessment uh, correlates and the indirect charges or the indirect costs correlate to the um, indirect costs of the non-DPW um, costs associated with, uh, with working with the water and sewer. The capital debt, health insurance, and retirement all check out as well, as well as the placeholders, water comp, uh, workman's comp, and unemployment. Um, the next section, um, this is actually their revenue section. Um, where they've had the uh, transfer from the general fund only half as much as they are expecting to in the previous year. And uh, we can see that the uh, uh, sewer, the um, accounts receivable or the you know, amounts from the water bills have increased as well. Uh, so, um, before I move, uh, are there any questions on this uh, on this budget? So, um, members, let me let me just um, get a screen here where I can see what you're doing. Let's see, where's this mess? Okay. So, um, Andy, you have your hand up. Yeah, I don't I don't know, Grant, whether you would know this, but do you have any idea what's going on with the water sewer? debt shift being transferred back to the water bills is that reflected in here somewhere or is that right here happening or not happening right, right there annie uh, line 4972 you notice that okay. it's it's decreasing by you know 5.5 million a couple of years ago 5.6 million now it's down to 1.8 million and it, and the um, water okay. sewer charges that you get on uh -huh. your water bill are below that are going up Okay, so that's what that transfer from the general fund represents. That's the debt shift. And my understanding is it'll be zero next year. Yeah, that'd probably be a good idea. Um, yeah, otherwise everything seems really clear to me, Grant. Good. We all have our opinions on the debt shift, but. <laughs> okay, uh, John Ellis. Uh, two questions. First question. Um, we had discussions about how in the DPW budget, Mike takes things from certain line items and puts them in other line items and, and winds up spending a lot more actual than is listed. Can you just confirm that you're, you're not allowed or he, he wouldn't be moving from water and sewer money to DPW money? Because you mentioned there's like this line that he doesn't use it all, but maybe he'll need more later. So when he's transferring that, that just gets transferred inside somewhere to another line item in water and sewer is, is my guess, but can you confirm that? That, that is, um, I think he even mentioned that one of the, um, as with any of these account line items, unspent funds stay in the enterprise account. Okay. And then the question was about um, postage. Um, I think that was kind of, bundled into some indirect 
line. Um, last time I tried to do my water and sewer bill online, pay it, it wasn't possible. The treasurer says they're getting some new software. Um, you know, every bill I have, the companies are desperate to make me pay online so they don't have to spend however much it costs to send me a bill, probably buck 50 each one. So do you know any information about when we'd be able to pay our bills online and when we can expect to see them reduce the costs in postage by encouraging people to pay online? Well, I, it would be a, an easy one to, John, thanks for the question. That would be an easy one to toss over into the treasurer's bin because they're the ones that are in charge of doing the money collecting. Um, water and sewer pretty much just delivers the water. That's why the indirect charge, that's why basically water and sewer pays money to the postage uh, pays money for postage and also pays money for the treasurer to do that. I, guess, you know, so. I was thinking of it because I, you mentioned something about software. So I, yeah, I, I got to add a comment to that, John. Um, so we had a discussion uh, about four or five weeks ago uh, when um, Arif and uh, went over the IT budget and there was a lot of discussion about um, the, um, I've actually forgotten the name of it, uh, but the, the, the uh, the old cash management system which ran on Informix, and it's ICS. I ICS. Yes, thank you. Um, and that um, that cash management system is just about out of the town, except for water and sewer. And it's that's what's the that's what it's being used for. And my understanding is that the the um, Elimination of the, that residual program is tied to deploying a different style um, water meters at people's homes for a remote uh, collection of data. I don't exactly know what the status is, but I know that it's a project that's been in process. There's 14,000 homes. They have to get them all uh, updated or you know registered with the right uh, equipment in order to change the cash management system. So, and I think Arif told us that uh, that was going to happen in the next, I thought it was 12 months. I'm not sure. You may want to comment on that. Okay. Because I, I had some emails that you were CC'd on about the treasurer saying they're switching some billing software. That's the ICS. It's a combination. Of, and the, the old system was called integrated cash something or another. Collection and, software. Collection software. Thank you. And, and um, they've basically got it out, except for the water sewer. And, and it's a combination of billing and, and cash management. And it's, it's tied to the uh, water reading, water meter reading technology. Okay, that wasn't how I understood that email, but I can take that offline for later. Um, so the... Um Interesting that uh, helps me actually understand. Uh, I did sort of question the answer that um, he has higher materials and supplies um, expenses because uh, he's replacing the um, meter reading technology, which you'd like to think overall is going to reduce the cost somewhere. Otherwise, why would it be more expensive? So uh, the materials and supplies are increasing, but I guess that's working, John, toward um, Installing the meters in all of the uh, in all of the homes. Um, I did have I did uh, um, another question toward Mike because I expected Peter Howard to ask me this question actually about the progress of the installation of all the replacing all the water meters. Um, I'll have to report back when I get the answer to that. To be fair to Mike, I just pinged him with that uh, yesterday. Dean, you had a question. I do. I actually have. I think four of them. If I no, get, yeah. If I get through them quick enough, um, <laughs> no. The the last question I was going to ask actually was sort of a rat circling on what John Ellis said, which was um, so the replacement of the water meters is necessary to then um, turn over the the billing system. I would assume in a project that size and scope with fourteen thousand parcels that. Um, the DPW director has a project plan, like when he expects to do, how much he expects to do, things like that. Could we just get a copy of it? And that way, when we 
have this discussion each year, we can just hold up the project plan and ask for a status update. I think that would be very nice. That's my first question. It's kind of more of a request, I guess. Um, my second thought, Grant, is um, as you know, the um, like you've you've referenced in your presentation that the town does um, they allocate costs to the departments and they have billing offsets and and things like that. Um, that's all based on a study that Powers and Sullivan did several years ago, right? So they go in and they do a cost allocation study and then the town follows it. Um, right. if, if I remember correctly, um, I think Andrew Flanagan was deputy town manager the last time we did a study. So my question is, are we, are we getting to the point? I don't think you should do a study every year because then it's silly. But are we getting to the point where we should do another one? And if not, when are they thinking? Like, is it an every 10 year thing? Is it an every year the finance committee grumbles about it thing? Like, what are we, what are they thinking? I think one's done, I, I, I remember the uh, Flanagan thing, yes, but I think one's done since then. But I'll check on that. At the end. No, I just think it's a question. Just make sure we're, we're, we're getting the latest. Yeah. And, and the amounts, by the way, they, they, I think they also, the amounts fluctuate from year to year too in their recommendations to make it even um, less straightforward. But I can inquire yeah. about that. So my third question, oh my, I don't know if it's really a question, but I looked at our um, annual financials and um, we have 17 million in revenue from the Water Sewer Enterprise Fund. And we have twelve million dollars in cash in the bank account, which is, you know, like three quarters of a year's worth of cash when <laughs> we do quarterly billing. Like it's not even like we do annual or semi-annual billing. Like we're billing quarterly at this point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I thought we had like bullied and pushed the DPW director into using that money for his um, building project. Yeah, I think we had kind of, and I think that probably still could be it. But can we just confirm that they're going to use that? They're going to pull, draw some of that down for the um, the DPW portion of the capital yard of the, the yard project. Yes, I, my understanding too, Dean. All right, and then the last thing, and I will email this to you so you don't have to get it. If you could ask the town, if you could, I, I say I'm, I'm done asking him for the un, un, unaccounted for water. So if I would like, and I'll send you this email, I would like our for any one year period. I don't care where he starts and end. The total gallons that the MWRA billed us for, and the total gallons which we charged residents in the town and whatnot. Because if you divide one by the other, that's the water that's sort of evaporated. Uh, don't, okay. Uh, that's I'll email good. you for it. I, Dean, thank you. I know, it's, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting that again this year. Um, <laughs> I, I'll just calculate it myself now. It's fine. Well, well, I think the thing that we can't, we always go around and around on this because I always ask Mike about this. Um, and the thing we go around and around on this a little bit is that the major buildings don't have meters. I know. And so I don't know how one accounts for that water. Yep. I know. But I'll forward your email along. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate it. We've had this conversation before. Um, and I'm glad you're doing it in the email. That's excellent because uh, he uh, should be prepared for something like that. Dean, let's back up for a minute on the um, project plan. I'm also and just former project manager myself. I used to hate getting those questions. And uh, Mike's not... Uh, I. I've anticipated that and have actually already asked for that. But um, not the first time I've asked. So um, it'd be interesting to see what we get back. Yeah, I mean, it's a, the public records law says he has to give it to us. So, and the town bylaw actually, for the finance committee says he has to hand it over, no. so. I think if we insist on it um, that he, you know, won't object to it. It's just, I think when one person asks for it, um, you know, it's each, like, you know, some of the answers to my questions are very nice, but I <laughs> think they could have been a little bit more directly answered, but I can appreciate that, you know, it's they're not easy answers either. So I will be glad to forward that over. And I will also I've already asked him about the project plan. So thank you. And I will also ask Sandy about the, ne the next study. Thank you for your, um, 
um, comments and, and input. Hey, Tim, thank you. Any other questions for um, Grant on this budget? Okay, I don't see any hands up here. So I have a couple of questions, uh, Grant. So um, the town has been involved in a series of um, legal actions uh, associated with the combined water sewer outflows. You know what I'm referring to? The, this, in other words, the, there are there are uh, potentially spots where the water system and the sewer, the, the, the storm drain system and the sewer system are not separate. Yeah. Right, some like seven or nine of them. Yep. Um, so, do you know the status of any of those uh, those legal actions by the state? No, I don't. Would you like me to check on them? Yes. And whether we have any liability. With the state also, I believe last year, the state also had the town under some sort of, uh, I don't know if, I, if the correct term is legal, but some sort of administrative review with respect to the issue that um, Dean raised with, uh, about uh, leakage. And, you know, that they have a standard that you're not, you're not supposed to have more than a certain amount of leakage. And I believe we also had some financial risk there. So I think that would be a, a, a corollary question to, to follow up on. Um, okay. Uh, one of the things, but uh, what what would you like? What's the? I'd like to know for both of those. Any, let's put it this way: any state or federal. Let's only use the term litigation, although I don't know if that's the correct term. But administrative action against the town with respect to the water sewer system, leakages, combined sewer outflows, or whatever. <laughs> okay. They're not, those are not small items. No. So um, on the leakage thing, yeah, okay, that sounds good. I recall uh, and other conversations in previous years about the um, wasted water or leaked water, et cetera. And um, that, that's part of the thing is that replace, that's part of their ongoing effort and they, they go to the places where they uh, have the biggest leaks first or something to replace them. But um, but I will ask them about that. OK. And then um, did you have any discussion with them? Uh, I, I can't remember if it was last. I don't think it was last year's town meeting because we had that really short town meeting, but probably the town meeting before where the uh, town manager was presenting the idea of charging people more money for watering their lawns and they were going to do this by measuring the water flow in the winter and then the water flow in the summer and determining how much they were spending on on their lawns versus their um, residential use and, and charge for it do you have any idea what the status of that is no okay. um to be fair i thought some of these questions would be uh some of these might be more Sandy questions than my questions. Well, um, he's, measured, answer, he's measuring the him. water for sure. You know, I don't know. Okay, and then um, so Dean mentioned. Did you did you talk to him about what he thinks the balance of the enterprise fund is? Dean mentioned. Uh, what'd you say, Dean? Twelve million dollars. That's the amount of cash. I don't know if that's the balance. No. That's not the balance. Uh, the cash could be uh, associated with some uh, debt as well, right? No. My apologies. I usually do get the balance of the fund. I usually have to get it from Ida uh, rather than Mike, but uh, I did not get it this time. I'll get get that as well. Mm. Uh. <laughs> Forgot an oversight. So, um, would we like to hold off um, until I get the questions, or do you want to go ahead and um, um, approve the budget? Uh, so, well, I'm going to suggest that the uh, that's a decision the committee can make. If you make a motion to approve the budget and somebody motion, moves to put it on the table, then we'll hold it off. But in the meantime, you can decide what you want to do. Very good. Well, 
we'll just let the process play out. I move that we uh, approve the water and sewer budget for uh, was it 23 million 388 928 23 million 588 928 uh, yeah. Yes, sorry. Second. Second. Income income and expense. Yes. Is there a second? Second. So it's been moved and seconded. Um, is there any discussion? No hands are up. I haven't heard a motion to, oh, Micaiah. Sorry, just wondering um, if you feel, or, um, if it would be better to table it um, in order to get answers to your questions. Like if you think that would be more- well, I, I think you can make that motion. That's what- um, Okay. I move to table. Okay, is there a second? Uh oh. Second. Ah, oh, there you go. Here's a second. <laughs> okay. It's uh so the motion is uh is made to uh, table this until we have the answer to the questions. Um and uh it's not debatable, so let me take the vote. Uh Grant Gibeon. I'll abstain. Uh Shane Blundell. Yes. John Ellis. No. A no vote means a no is, is against the table. And if you vote yes, it is for tabling. Uh, Micaiah? Uh, yes. Mary Margaret? Uh, yes. Arif? Arif, are you there? No. Oh, sorry. I, I, I meant to say uh, no. I was on mute. Okay, yeah, Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Brian Beck, he's not here, I think. Uh, Peter Howard. Peter Howard. Right. Sorry, no. Shailene. Yes. Daryl. Yeah. John Dice. Yes. Alan Jones. Yes. Any LaCourt? No. Mm -hmm. um, Alta Altasi? No. George Koser? No. Christine Deschler? No. Dean Carmen? Yes. And David McKenna? No. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine votes in favor of. Uh, tabling, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight votes no. So the um, motion to table, uh, the vote to table passes. So that the vote is tabled until we get the answers to these questions. So, uh, Grant, do you want to take us on to the Warren articles for uh, water and sewer, please? Sure. <clears throat> Geez, Charlie, I, I should have—I shouldn't have abstained and voted. That way, you would have a chance to vote. Uh, I prefer not to vote. It's easier. I know that's why I did it that way. I, I, I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind waiting either. I think it's—I think it's kind of the right thing to do. Um, I believe these are articles. Um, uh, uh, page twelve in the warrant. Uh, article uh, fifty-nine. We'll start with article fifty-nine. And that was page 12 of the warrant. Yes. Article 59. Nicely highlighted. Um, so the amount of this is 800,000 um, that we're asking for. It's the same as every year. Um, so I move that we approve uh, the 800,000 for uh, and sewage facilities. Second. So it's been moved and seconded. Um, are there any, oh, I just lost the, uh, any any questions on this article? Where's my people? I keep losing the participants, so there we go. Any questions on, on this article? Um, just to clarify so that I'm sure we're all on the same page. Um, this is money that we borrow from the state at little or no interest. 
correct? It's interest free, yes. From the MW, we borrow from the MWRA. And, and uh, I think uh, a corollary question that you might want to ask of uh, Jonathan Wallach is that is this the same number that's in the, the other category in the capital budget? John, is that the case? I uh, would have to get back to you on that one. Charlie, is it the same number? <laughs> um, I don't have it in front of me. It normally is. And yeah, I, when, when I had your job, I used to confirm that every year, you know. So I'm, just uh, I'm, happy to conf I'm happy to confirm it. If you're so on I'll your phone. Go check. Okay. What's the um, number again? But, but please let job. us not table this one. Just <laughs> let's okay, we, we won't table it. Um, What's the number? 800,000. Thank you. For the, for the sewers, okay? Yeah. Um, Article 59. Any other questions on Article 59? Okay, so it's been moved and seconded. Uh, no other, seeing no other hands raised or questions, I will proceed with a vote. Um, Grant Gibbion? Aye. Shane Blundell? Makaya Healy? Yes. Mary Margaret? Yes. Arif Padaria? Yes. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Brian, Ryan Beck's not here. Um, Peter Howard? Yes. Shailene Pokris? Yes. Daryl Harmer? Yes. John Dice? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. Annie LaCourt? Yes, and you skipped John Ellis. I did? I think so. John Ellis? You, you got me, yes. Um, Alan Tosti. Yes. George Koser. Yes. Christine Deschler. Yes. Dean Carmen. Yes. And David McKenna. Yes. Uh, thank you. That's a uh, unanimous vote to support the $800,000 of MWRA debt for the Water Sewer Enterprise Fund. Uh, traditionally, don't you explain that this is the amount they overcharge us and then lend us back a zero interest? <laughs> well, that was the prior boss. <laughs> I okay. actually, yeah, we actually forgot to do that. I wanted to thank Andy for um, for mentioning about the, the the detail behind it. But yeah, we um, off off the game tonight, I guess. <laughs> moving on, moving on to Article sixty. It's been voted and closed. Article sixty. Go ahead, Grant. Okay, Article sixty. Um, familiar territory. <laughs> um, so this is uh, interest free. That uh, just never. <laughs> this is the same deal as the other one. Except this one is for water mains, and this is 1.3 million. Um, so, if there aren't any questions, and uh, of course, pending um, the John to verify this as well as the other amount, um, I make I move to uh, approve the uh, 1.3 million dollar appropriation for the reconstruction of water mains. There, a second. Seconded by Annie. Okay. Okay. Uh, no hands are up. So, uh, Grant Gibbion. Aye. Shane Blundell. Yes. John Ellis. Yes. Kaya Healy. Yes. Mary Margaret. Yes. Arif Padaria. Yes. Jonathan Wallach. Yes. Uh, Peter Howard. Yes. Shailene Pokris. Yes. Daryl Harmer. Yes. John Deist? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. Danny LaCourt? Yes. Uh, Alan Tossi? Yes. George Koser? Yes. Christine Deschler? Yes. And uh, Dean Carmen? Yes. And David McKenna? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so the um, interest-free uh, water and sewer loan from the MWRA for, uh, sorry, water loan from the MWRA for the sewer enterprise fund is passed unanimously. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Um, I actually um, cannot confirm at this time that those are the same numbers. I'm looking at uh, the current master spreadsheet for the capital plan, and they've actually got 900,000 for sewer system and 1.4 million for water system. So right, I'll have to look we, into that a little bit further. Okay. Find out what's going on. Uh, well, 
since we've voted it, um, why don't we just look forward to your feedback at the next meeting? I will and we'll get back to you. And, uh, meanwhile, and, and you, you should uh, coordinate with Grant because we don't know whether Grant was given incorrect information or the Capital Planning Committee was given incorrect information. No, I think what it is is there's a $100 uh, $100,000 for sewer rehab in the budget. Oh, yes. $100,000 water mains in the budget. Okay, you're right. Uh, it's as non, um, not MWRA numbers. Gotcha. So then, yes, I can confirm that those numbers are correct. Okay, good. Excellent. So, and if I may, so actually, every year I would say this amount and Alan Tosti would then tell me, so which is the amount that we're asking for and which is so glad that we got this cleared away the same, the same way, so. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, Grant, when you come back with the answers to those questions, we'll quickly take up um, water sewer and uh, the enterprise fund budget and, and vote it, okay? Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Peter, uh, would you like to do the minutes for Maple 5th? Um, sure. Uh, the minutes got circulated late today. Um, and uh, due to my leaving them, my delay, I guess. Uh, I got several uh, inputs. I've, I've, I've changed, I've, cha I've incorporated those. I move they be uh, accepted as corrected. Thank you, Peter. Is there a second? Second. Second, thank you. Um, so on the minutes. Any further discussion on the minutes? I see none. Okay, Grant Gibbian. Aye. Shane. Yes. John Ellis. Yes. Kai Healy. Yes. Mary Margaret. Yes. Arif. Yes. Jonathan Wallach. Yes. Peter Howard. Yes. Shailene Pokris. Yes. Daryl Harmer. Yeah. John Dice. Yes. Alan Jones. Yes. Andy Laporte. Yes. yes. Uh, Alan Tosti. Yes. George Koser. Yes. Christine Deschler. Yes. Dean Carmen. Yes. David McKenna. Yes. Thank you. Uh, minutes are passed unanimously. Okay, um, so the next, um, we have several uh, sort of uh, cleanup things, I don't wanna call them cleanup, but just to make sure that we voted um, all of the things that we have um, addressed in the past at various times. So on page three of the the yeah, document that I emailed out to you earlier that says committees uh, is the article on committees, which I've, um, I've forgotten the number of it. It's um, it's 50 something, I think. It's 62, I believe, Charlie. 62, yes, there is appropriations. 60. appropriations so we heard from arts and culture. Uh, they requested less money, $30,000. Uh, zero Waste actually requested $500 more, but the finance working group, uh, I don't recall whether they talked to them or they talked to Sandy Pooler, but that uh, Zoom feature was available without the additional money. So we voted um, 3,000, we voted the, the same amount as the prior year. So the various boards and committees are listed there. And um, I think it would be a motion to accept that number um, of, oh, I didn't total it. Uh, it's, uh, I have it here, hang on a second. It's 88,000 and something. Um, I can't believe I didn't do that. Um, Be with you in a second. Um, uh, 
Don't rush the math, Charlie. No, I haven't. I'm trying to get the spreadsheet. I, I when I copied it into that document, I I didn't go all the way down to where the total was. The total of those numbers is eighty-eight thousand eight hundred thirty-five dollars. So um, a, mo a motion to adopt that figure for Article sixty-two is in order. So moved. Is it seconded? Second. Would you say the number again, please? $88,835. So is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Um, you can speak up if you want. I, I don't have the right screen in front of me. No hands are raised. Okay. Uh, so then on Article 62, we move to a vote. Grant Gibeon? Aye. Shane? Yes. John? Yes. John? Yep. Taya? Yes. Mary Margaret? Yes. Arif? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Uh, Peter? Yes. Shailene? Yes. Daryl? Yes. John? Yes. Uh, Alan Jones? Yes. Annie? Yes. Uh, Alan? Trustee? Yes. George? Yes. Christine Detchler? Yes. Dean Carmen? Yes. David McKenna? Yes. Thank you. That vote is unanimous. So uh, on the following page, there are uh, three items here. Um, Sandy Pooler did verify these numbers. Um, the town day celebration. This is the one that's uh, the page title. Of the Charlie, are you showing us something or not? Really? Uh, no, I sent it out to you. I'm sorry. Okay, no problem. I can, I can show it to you. Hold on. Hold on. Um, it, it's Article 63. No, I, I, I think Arif is asking. Um, there it is. I can share my screen. Just give me 30 seconds here. Thank you. Uh, okay, can you see that? Yes. Okay, so the the uh, article, the numbers in black were last year's numbers. The town, actually last year, the town day celebration, what we, we zeroed that because um, of the pandemic. Uh, Sandy indicates that um, that we may have a town day this year. If we don't, of course, the money won't be spent and it'll go into uh, into uh, free cash. Um, so, are there any any questions? This is this is pretty standard. We do this virtually every year. No questions. A motion to approve is in order. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded in Article uh, six, 62. Did somebody say it? 63. 63. Okay. Uh, Grant? Aye. Shane? Yes. John? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Mary Margaret? Yes. Arif? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Peter? Yes. Shailene? Yes. Daryl? Yes. John? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. Annie? Yes. Uh, Tosti? Alan Tosti? Yes. George Koser? Yes. Christine? Yes. Dean? Yes. David? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. That's passed unanimously. 63. So uh, then um, going to the next page here. Okay, several warrant articles that we have not yet addressed. Um, uh, the PEG access, I have the, the numbers from last year over on the right. The PEG access is 
money that comes from the um, cell companies that use the town towers and the money is by uh, town bylaw spent with the, uh, the help, help improve uh, parks and, and that sort of thing. Um, in the past, that used to directly go into the town. Uh, the, a few years ago, they passed a law and it has to go through uh, the general fund be uh, appropriated by town meeting. So that's what this is all about. Uh, and Sandy Pooler does not yet have that number. He's chasing after it. Uh, Article 64, uh, appropriate uh, miscellaneous appropriations is uh, indemnification of, of um, I think it's police officer, officer indemnification. Um, let me go back to that article. Yeah, it's, it's um, let me just read it to you. It's to see if the town will vote legal defense to appropriate a sum of money to replenish, replenish the legal defense fund um, or to appropriate a sum of money in accordance with the chapter 41 of uh, 100B general laws to indemnify certain retired police officers and firefighters for all reasonable medical and surgical expenses which they incurred or to determine how the money will be raised and expended. So this appropriation is for medical expenses uh, under this article and um, we have the number from uh, from Sandy. So that's 10,759. I think last year was 10,366 or something like that. So a motion for Article 64 uh, is in order. If there, are there any questions? Yes. Yes, Peter. Uh, in the budget book, it says 10,666. That was last year. Now this it's, 2020. it's 2022 what it said. <clears throat> well, maybe they just put last year's number in. This is this is today's number. Hot, hot off the presses. <laughs> Verified with uh, Sandy Pooler. I think these numbers, if I can, they're based on a calendar year and they're based on actual numbers. So when the manager puts together his budget in early January, he, he does not have those numbers yet. Um, so that 1066 is just a placeholder. Um, the number comes out later, which the chairman has. Okay, you know. So is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. So, has a question. Uh, you have another question, Annie? Uh, I had a question. <laughs> sorry, Charlie, oh, thanks. I'm sorry, Shane. Go right ahead. I'm, I'm sorry, I've got all these screens up here. I can't see. It's no problem. But can, 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 can it, somebody just explain me one more time? Is, we're appropriating to a legal defense fund money for medical expenses? No, actually, no, no, no. Sorry. sorry. The article, uh, let, me, let me just bring the article up and show it to you. Let's see if I can do this, share my screen. I'm oh, I'm sharing it now. How do I, I have to stop the share, so hang on a second. So now I'll share again. While you're doing that, I can I can say that the uh, legal defense fund doesn't need any more money, according to the control to the. Uh... So can you see my screen here? Article sixty four. No, I'm yeah. sorry. Article. It's not the right number. Article six. Article sixty four. Yeah, article sixty four. Right. Okay. So it says to see if the town will vote the following, and there's a legal defense clause <clears throat> and for the legal defense fund, and then there's also indemnification of medical costs to appropriate a sum of money in accordance with provisions of the general laws, and to indemnify certain retired police officers and firefighters for all reasonable medical and surgical expenses which they incurred. So this is under the general law, chapter 41, section 100B. Um, in the actual expenses that were incurred were, uh, let's see if I can see what the number was, 10,759, and that's what they're looking for. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, are there other qu questions? Okay, so. Um, so, Sherry. So what, if there are no other questions on Article 64, let's take a, a vote. Grant, 
Aye. Jane? Yes. John? John, tell us. All right, yes. Now, Micaiah? Um, abstain. Abstain. Oh, I have to count now. Okay. Gary, Margaret? <laughs> yes. Uh, Arif? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Peter? No. Shailene? Yes. Darrell? Yeah. John Deist? Yes. Um, Alan Jones? Yeah, Alan yes. Jones. Yes. Uh, Annie LaCourt? Yes. Uh, Al Tosti? Yes. George Cusser? Yes. Christine Deschler? Yes. Dean Carmen? Yes. David McKenna? Uh, I will respectfully abstain. Okay, so we have uh, two abstentions and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 voting in favor, Peter. Two abstentions. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so I need to go back to the screen. Um, so the other, um, another article that we need to uh, vote is the overlay reserve surplus. Al Tosti, uh, do you want to discuss this as part of the financial subcommittee uh, working group? Al Tosti? Did I lose Al? No, I'm here. Oh, OK. Uh... This is a, a funds from the overlay reserve surplus to um, go uh, to reduce the tax rate or reduce the tax raise. Yeah, so it's a revenue. I've got uh, $400,000 That's was correct. the last long-term uh, five-year plan. That's correct. And it was confirmed today by, uh, by Sandy. Okay. So maybe you should just explain what it's for, how it gets there. Okay, basically the assessors have the responsibility of setting um, the overlay. It doesn't go through town meeting. They just determine it. That's the amount of money that they estimate that they're going to need for uh, abatements and exemptions that they give, uh, that they have to give after the tax bills go out. So if somebody appeals the value of their home, they pay the tax, they appeal it, the assessors decide. And if the homeowner wins, he'll get an abatement back. But you need to have a chunk of money uh, to uh, have for the to pay the tax back, the uh, abatement. Uh, so they set the overlay, and the overlay, I believe, this year is. I think it's eight hundred thousand. It's either eight or six, it's too small. But anyway, that's the amount of money. Now, after a while, uh, the assessors give out all, you know, settle all the abatements. Once all the abatements are settled um, and all the exemptions are settled, if there's money left over, the re assessors can release it uh, to be used to reduce taxes. Um, and I think actually they can clump all of them together now. Uh, so the assessors have uh, agreed to release $400,000 uh, to be used to reduce the tax rate. Thank you, Al. Are there any other questions on that? Let me go back and look. I have to um, speak. Speak up. I think I have. Here we go. Any questions? No questions. Oh, okay. you know what? What? What article is this? What's it is article um, 74. 74. 74. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, on Article 74, there are no. If there are no further questions, we'll take a vote for uh, $400,000 for the overlay reserve surplus to be used to uh, reduce taxes. Um, Grant Gibbion, aye. Uh, Shane Blundell, yes. John Ellis, yes. Aya, yes. Mary Margaret, yes. Uh, Arif, 
Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Peter? Yes. Jaylene? Yes. Daryl? Yes. Uh, John Dice? Yes. Alan? Yes. Uh, Annie LaCourt? Yes. Uh, Al Tossi? Yes. George Koser? Yes. Christine Deschler? Yes. Ian Carmen? Yes. David McKenna? Yes. Thank you. It's unanimously passed, Peter, Article 64, $400,000. Uh, the next uh, article that um, would be appropriate to consider is Warren Article 75, which is a, uh, an appropriation for the long-term stabilization fund. This is not the override stabilization fund. This is a fund that's uh, that the town traditionally puts $100,000 in. Uh, I think the last time I looked, it was about three and a half million dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's... It, the last time we used it, I recall there was a flood or something like that uh, that damaged a bunch of buildings, and we needed to get some money out in short order to get the to to uh, get the money to service the problem, which was not covered, which was part of a deductible not covered by insurance. So it's 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 kept to basically cover short term, uh, significant short term emergencies that can't can't be covered by the uh, uh, by the by the uh, finance committee's reserve fund so uh, last year we put no money into it because of the uncertainties of uh, state aid etc when we were facing the pandemic and it was not no, was not known where we were going to wind up with um, our revenue situation so uh, but now the, the town manager wants to go back to the prior practice of putting a hundred thousand dollars into that stabilization fund um, does anyone want to make it have any questions on that or Charlie, I think that's article 76. Oh, did I blow it? Um, I have a quick question, Charlie. Uh, just uh, I'll wait for you got the moment. I just got to mm -hmm. I prop you're probably right. You're right. You're right. I think the override 75. Yes, you're right. Um, so it's 76. Oh, I see. I said I have uh, two. Yeah, I have two two seventy fives on my my sheet. All right, it's Article seventy six. Peter, do you have that? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so go ahead, Annie. So, do we have anything like a policy around a maximum and a minimum in this fund? Um, like some, some. I can't. I cannot remember. Um, I do know that I can remember a decade or so ago. We stopped putting money in there for several years because uh, the town management thought it was high enough. Alan, Altasti, do you remember? I, I don't think um, there is a set policy on it. Um, it's it's not a rainy day fund. It's an emergency fund, right. like like Charlie described. Um, and I think uh, under the current circumstances going ahead, where everything is could be up in the air. Uh, it, it seems to make financial sense to keep going. Uh -huh. Whether it will be in the future, we'll have to decide. Right. I, so I'm, I'm, I mean, I don't want to hang it up. I'm happy to vote for it. I think it's a good idea, but I think we should consider the possibility we want to develop a policy about a range, I don't know, compared to income or compared to value of properties or something that tells us you know, if we didn't, for some reason, didn't have an emergency for 10 years and didn't draw on it, and it got really huge, we would need some reason to consider whether it was enough, if that makes sense. So I, I, my, that's, I think that's a great uh, suggestion, Annie, and um, perhaps we can have our policy working group incorporate <laughs> that into that thing. No, I'm, I'm serious. Sure. No, no, I know you're serious. <laughs> All right. We'll come up with that. And, and uh, you know, we document it and get it get it in front of the town manager. I mean, we'll come up with that unless well, maybe the select board. I, I don't know, but yeah. some, somehow we get get it uh, documented and 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 follow practice there. Great, Mr. Is Chairman. Some yes. Way God. I'm sorry, Dean. Did I hear your yes question? Yeah. So I will note on that, and I can't find it quick enough. Um, our appropriation into that account and maintenance of that account at a certain dollar level balance 
is actually a criteria that Standard & Poor's uses when they rate our bonds. And I cannot remember the underlying fundamentals, but I know there is a, there's actually a thought behind the balance and the appropriation that ties into that. Okay, so we, we should then incorporate that into the policy that there's, you know, an effect on our bond rating that is the reason that we do this and, and therefore a minimum that we should keep in there that affects that rating, something along yeah, the way. Yes, so funny enough, <clears throat> if I recall, and I'd have, Annie, I have to go back and look and I'm kind of like scribbling, I'm like mm -hmm. looking as quick as I can right now. Um, mm -hmm. I believe that we're actually assessed high by standard and poor's for having a policy and then deducted points for not having it written down. <laughs> Okay, good. More motivation to write a policy. Okay, <laughs> okay. great. Thank Which you. I will call on Dean to help with. <laughs> Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Annie. Um, any further questions on Article 76? Actually, I wonder if I can do this. Um, uh, that's a picture. Okay. Uh, any, no further questions on Article 76. So, um, Oh, Micaiah, you have your hand up. It, it was just um, to see the shortcut of General Forty, General Law Forty, <laughs> Chapter Forty, Section Five B, like to see what it can be used for, what appropriated. But I can look it up at the law later. But if anybody knows how it is, how it can be appropriated, uh, it requires a two-thirds vote of town meeting to appropriate. I can tell you that. But to 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 whom, to what? Entities. Um, I don't know. I mean, emergency I emergency requirements. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Don't worry. I'll, I'll I'll do my homework. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yes, Alan. I think it used to be many years ago that you had to use it for a capital item uh, that you could borrow for such a period of time, but they got rid of that rule in the last public financed emergency in the state. So I think now you could you could spend it for almost anything. Thank you, Al. You mean uh, uh, the last uh, Municipal Modernization Act? A couple no, it was before that. I think it was uh, like in the disaster of 08 or the disaster of 01. Uh -huh. Okay, further questions on Article um, 76, Long-Term Stabilization Fund to appropriate $100,000. Okay, no further questions. Now uh, it's been moved in... Has it been moved and seconded? So moved. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Grant Gibeon? Aye. Shane? Yes. John Ellis? Yes. Kaya? Yes. Mary Margaret? Yes. Arif? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Peter? Yes. Shailene? Yes. Daryl Harmer? Yes. Uh, John Dice? Yes. Alan? Yes. Annie? Yes. Alan Tosti? Yes. George? Yes. Christine? Yes. Dean? Yes. David? Yes. That's unanimous. Thank you on, uh, for Article 76. So, um, $100,000. The, uh, the next, uh, Let's see, we did that, we did that. So the next article is the use of free cash. Um, this is the number from the uh, most recent five-year plan. It's 50% of the certified free cash. I sent, I sent the uh, report on the state's, um, I don't know who it is, the state, the state uh, DOR, I guess it was, uh, certified the free cash back around November and, um, it was about 11.3 million, and that's probably what two, two times that is. And uh, we have a, a policy that we have followed on that. And since the policy was developed by Al Tasti, Al, do you want to describe it? Well, we, we have, I'm not sure if I was the uh, beginning person, could have been Bob O'Neill, but uh, we, we've decided, or oh, we always have, we get the certified free cash, we use half, and we roll half. And I think the logic behind this is that um, it's, it's sort of a conservative use of it. Um, in other words, as free cash is going up, we're only using half. 
and the street tax is going down and we're only using half. So we, um, we roll a certain amount, which tends, you know, if you're going down, you're going down slower. And if you're going up, you're going up a, a little slower. Uh, and so it tends to keep a, a, a conservative trend over a period of years. Uh, and uh, so that's, that's the reason we've done it. Um, I, I think it's a, a good policy and I, uh, I move favorable action on the 5 million 659184. Second. So it's been moved and seconded. Annie, you have your hand up? Yeah, I just wanted to confirm one thing for myself, and that is that that number is a cumulative number. We didn't actually certify that much free cash in one year. It's over multiple years that we accumulate money in that fund. Um, we're spending closer to the bone than that. Correct? That number is an accumulative number, yes. Okay, got it. What is the number again? 5,659,184. So the, the amount of free cash that we have in the, in the account is actually twice that, 11 million and change. And as Al explained, the policy that we have followed is to use 50% of it as revenue in any given year. Good with that, Peter? Yeah, it does. Thank okay. you. So, any other questions on um, Article 77, use of free cash? Okay. Um, Article 77, we take a vote. It's been moved and seconded um, for 5659184. Um, you know, look at look at it this way. When you take this vote, you are taking five point six million dollars out of the savings account and planning to spend it next year. So it's a significant a significant step. Grant Gibbion. Aye. Shane Blundell. Yes. John Ellis. Yes. Kaya. Yes. Mary Margaret. Yes. Arif. Abstain. Um, Jonathan. Yes. Peter. Yes. Jaylene. Yes. Daryl. Daryl. Yes. John Dice. Yes. Alan Jones. Yes. Jenny. Yes. Uh, Alan Tossi. Yes. George Koser. Yes. Christine Deschler. Yes. Dean Carmen. Yes. David McKenna. Yes. Thank you. Um, so it is one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen in favor, one of sixteen in favor, one abstention. I don't know if I counted that right, but I think that should be it. Sixteen in favor, one abstention. Do you have that, Peter? Thank you. Okay. Um, so the other, the other uh, big article there is the Fiscal Stability Stabilization Fund or the Override Stabilization Fund. And in the five-year plan, there's a, that number of 5,935,481. Uh, what we traditionally do is not vote that until the end of the budgeting process because this is how the budget gets balanced. And if we have some uh, savings in the budgeting process, it, it means we can uh, reduce the appropriation from that fund into uh, revenue. Uh, if we have some untoward news, then we have to take more out of the stabilization fund. And as that uh, fiscal stability stabilization fund dwindles, we get, we get on a fast track towards uh, going back to the voters for, for an override. And if the override doesn't happen, then you know, we have to do other draconian things. So we won't address uh, that article tonight. Uh, let's see, what's the next thing here? Okay, so I think we have two updates slash corrections that um, have come up. Uh, one, Al Alan Jones, do you want to address the, uh, I think Sandy Pooler sent you an updated spreadsheet? Uh, yeah, I sent this out um, Monday 
with the details. And this is just one of those, you know, I, for years I've been saying it'd be nice if we all played off the same sheet of music. But the problem is, if you do that and there's a mistake, you're not likely to catch it. So the good thing is that my spreadsheets are completely different than Sandy's spreadsheets. And when they don't reconcile, it looks like there's a problem. Well, in the library budget we voted, I think last week, the uh, longevity was counted twice in the revised salary. So uh, the what I'd like to uh, move is that we reduce the library budget by 17762 to 2644669 2644 what was it 669 669 2644669 and then to balance that uh, the collective bargaining article the salary reserve goes to 671485 so those work together Okay, so uh, any this is uh, basically a uh, spreadsheet error that Alan caught and Sandy has agreed with and has corrected these numbers. Are there any questions or any discussion? I see Peter Howard's hand up. Mistake, take it down. Okay, any other questions? Okay, I don't see any. Therefore, uh, we're going to take a vote on uh, a revote on the library budget and collective bargaining, reducing the library budget by $17,762 to $2,644,669. In uh, the uh, changing the um, um, collective bargaining to 671485. Is that correct, Alan? Yes. Okay. Uh, no further questions, so we'll vote. Um, Grant Gibbion? Aye. Shane Blundell? Yes. John Ellis? Yes. Jakaya? Yes. Mary Margaret? Yes. Arif? Yeah. Jonathan? Yes. Peter? Yes. Shailene? Yes. Daryl? Yes. Uh, John uh, Dice? Yes. yes. Alan Jones? Yes. Annie? Yes. Uh, Al Tosti? Yes. George Koser? Yes. Uh, Christine Dexler? Yes. Dean Carmen? Yes. And David McKenna? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that is done. Now, uh, Micaiah, you had a small change in the pay and classification plan. Do you want to explain what that was? Sure. Uh, in like spirit um, of Al Jones, uh, I caught an administrative error in um, the spreadsheet of um, Karen Malloy, the, the human resource director, um, as we were looking at the uh, reclassific reclassification of um, the senior clerk and typist, it was by $20. Um, so I, because the, the error already was corrected in our minutes, um, I, I think it was voted and approved appropriately. You think, you think it was voted appropriately? Um, tonight, yeah, I made the change over in the minutes. Okay, I, I, I see. So, uh, so um, Micaiah has changed the minutes so that they, the correct number is in the minutes that we uh, voted last week. And uh, I guess the question is, do we want to take another vote or do you accept this as an administrative change? Uh, I, I think we should accept it as an administrative change. Um, second. Is it up to me? <laughs> oh, second. If there's no objection, we'll just do that. I, I, I'm in favor of that as well. I have a question, though. Yes, Peter. Uh, Mikhail, what is the uh, proper number? Thank you. Um, so the vote that we, uh, the total that we voted on last last or on Monday was sixty three thousand four hundred seventy four. Um, the correct number is sixty three thousand. $454. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Makaya. It's taken care of administratively. Good work. All right. So then, um, 
we have um, introduced a number of uh, working groups this year, and I was hoping that we could just quickly go down the. Oh, Charlie, excuse me. Yes, Peter. How about Article 66, the traffic study? Oh, you're right. Uh, we didn't. Uh, you, that we put on the table, and you were going to investigate that, right? I'm ready to report on it. All right. Let's then go to Article uh, 66, the traffic study. Uh, I remind the committee that at the hearing um, last month, we were told that that uh, Transportation Advisory Committee had investigated the intersection of um, Appleton and Park Avenue, and determined that it's unsafe. They looked at data and so forth. Um, but they, I guess they feel they're not um, competent to consider the effects of a change on that intersection with other intersections on Mass Avenue and Appleton. Um, and so they, they wanted to hire a professional to look into that for $7,000. Um, at the time that of our of the, the testimony, the the uh, of the hearing, I mean, the uh, advisory committee had not yet voted on it, but they have since voted on it. Um, we question um, whether um, they were following proper procedures. Um, for example. Had the select board uh, asked for this study? And the answer to that one is yes, they have. They had. Um, however, the select board is not happy about dealing with this in town meeting. They don't think that's the right way to go about it. Um, the town manager, in the meantime, the town manager or rather, I couldn't get a hold of him, but Alan Tosti got a hold of, of Sandy Pooler, and, and they agree that DPW can absor absorb this cost. So, um, and incidentally, the tactical <clears throat> TAC has about $3,000 uh, uh, in their coffers carried over from last year and added to this year's $2,000 a year appropriation. Um, however, this, they don't have a $5,000. Um, <clears throat> so we, since the, the town manager says the DPW can handle it, and um, <clears throat> I'd like to move no action on this article. Second. Okay, so um, it, it has been tabled. Uh, so I'm going to take it uh, administratively off the table and assume that if we vote on this, everyone has agreed that it's off the table. Thank uh, you. Thank you. I don't know if you're allowed to do these things under this open meeting law under the Zoom rules, but we'll try to do it. Um, so the motion has been made and seconded for no action on Article 66. Are there further questions or comments? John Ellis. Uh, so does that mean we're not gonna have to deal with this at town meeting or they're gonna remove it or, or how's this gonna be handled? We're gonna have to discuss this at town meeting or is it just- uh, if, if, if we vote no action, uh, it'll go into the um, to the moderators. What, what do they call that? His consent, his consent, um, Agenda. Uh, agenda group of articles yeah. and unless somebody calls out that they want to discuss it it won't even be discussed um, we'll, we'll have a comment won't we people uh, agree yeah well we can put a comment in the in the uh in the uh, uh report, our report yes okay good thanks okay uh, thank you is this is this is the intersection where the young man got Killed, right? Um, no, this is the one on, on Path Park Avenue. On Park Ave. Uh, I oh. think wasn't the fatality on Mass Avenue? Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
This is the one by the nursing home on Park Ave, Park Ave oh, Nursing okay. Home. Hey, I have a comment to unrelated, but I'm viewing somehow John Dice's screen. So this is pretty odd. Uh, what happened that's to my, the... that's my screen. Oh, no, I can see your screen, which has the shared uh, thing, but then all the people are gone. All right, whatever. Weird. Anyways, all right, might be on my end. I can't see like all of you guys anymore. Hey, Charlie, you could probably unshare at this point. Um, yeah, I can. Oh, okay, yeah. Now we're seeing John's screen. I just let um, John back into the meeting, so <laughs> I don't know what could have happened. I don't know, but we have to. I think Liz, <laughs> that you could. John, could you unshare your screen? Um. I don't think I can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, you can start reading your email though. You don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, Charlie, I've I've lost everybody but yourself and Annie. <laughs> well, you got the best of us. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Oh, oh, careful there. <laughs> You're not the best of us. Very good. Very good. Probably true, everybody. actually. <laughs> I don't know what we do here. Um, can you share, John? Uh, Maybe share and then unshare. I'm going to leave the meeting. Okay, then come back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe John was in there. I'm good now. So yeah, it looks like he's still here. Okay. Uh, so we're on a, a vote of of um, no action on Article. 66. Are there any other questions? Okay. Um, Grant Gibeon. Vote aye. I, and I is for no action. So Correct. Uh, Shane Blundell. Yes. John Ellis. Yes. Uh, Makaya Healy. Yes. Mary Margaret. Yeah. Arifa Daria. Yes. Uh, Jonathan Wallach. Yes. Brian Beck. Oh, he's not here. Sorry. Peter Howard. Yes. Shailene. Yes. Uh, Daryl. Yes. John Dice. He's probably not here. He's here twice. He's here twice now. Okay. <laughs> Still signed in. Okay, we're going to skip over John Dice. Are we okay? Jones? Am I right now? You're in. You're in. You're in here twice, John. You got to get rid of one of your screens. I don't know how to do it. Um, are you voting yes, John? No action, John. Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, Alan Jones. Yes. Annie. Yes. Daniel Costi. Yes. Uh, George Koser. Yes. Dean Deschler. Yes. Dean Carmen. Yes. David McKenna. Dean. Yes. And David. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Peter, for following up on that. Uh, we're voting no action on the traffic article. So somebody's got their microphones on and it's echoing here. So, Charlie. Yes, John. Uh, yeah. Um, what's the status on our consideration of Article Twenty Five? Hmm. Uh, let's see. I have to figure out how to find that. Give me it's the second. real estate transfer fee. Oh, yeah. oh, we're waiting for something to happen with the Board of Selectmen. And uh, I think we discussed that uh, the status was that um, it's not an appropriation article. There are two, there are two articles uh, that are still hanging around uh, like that. Um, one is Article 25, and the other is... Um, there's a affordable housing article uh, 21, I think, which is also not an appropriation article. And um, and so I think w with the, uh, uh, I think the real estate transfer fee, we, we, didn't, we didn't actually vote on this, but I think we sort of came to a consensus that it was a no report and we're waiting for the selectmen to take action. 
Charlie, am I okay now? Or I'm, I'm just here once now, I hope. Um, you're good, John. There you go. You're good, John. Thank you. Good. If Alan right. Jones says you're good, you're good. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, th thank you, Charlie. So at some point, we'll just formally vote as no report. Yeah, or just uh, announce it if we, if we okay. don't have to vote. Okay. Can we take a position of no position on 21 now? Um, on 21, 21 is the, uh, let me go back. Yeah, this does not ask for an appropriation. Article 21. I, I, well, I don't know if you, it, it just has not an appropriation. It's not our article. Uh, yeah, why was it on our list? I, I move no report. Yeah. Uh, second. Second. Okay, it's moved and seconded for no report. There, If there are no objections, we'll, we'll pass on, it, on a vote on that and just assume that everybody is in consensus. Yeah. Okay, good. So uh, Article 21 is going to be no report. You have that, Liz? Thank you. Yes, I have it. Sorry, I was muted. That's okay. All right. Um, so we still need to find out what the Board of Selectmen is, are going to say about that other article. Um, and there was another article, Article 23, which also is on our list, is uh, to see if the town will vote to study how to implement an affordable housing overlay district. We don't need to take any action on that either because that's a study. And there's no there's no appropriation. Okay. So um, I think that brings us to the last. I don't know how much time we have left here. Nine twenty four. Um, I was hoping that we could get some some uh, updates from the on the on the working groups, and I wanted to uh, remark that uh, earlier this year. Uh, I um, expanded or continued and expanded uh, what I call a leadership working group. Uh, Al used to have this uh, sort of group of um, himself and the uh, three uh, vice chairs and um, you know, himself and the three, three vice chairs. And, oh, and the Peter Howard secretary uh, as a sort of advisory group. Um, I, I expanded this to include uh, Al Tosti who is, as former chairman, um, Annie on her work with the IT uh, group because it was pretty instrumental in trying, getting us launched this year in the, in the uh, Zoom era. And um, Jonathan Wallach as our delegate to the Capital Planning Committee. So uh, we've, we had a couple of meetings and uh, mo mostly discussed just how, how the things would operate this year, including the formation of the policy, information systems, operations, research, communications, et cetera, working groups. And um, the most valuable thing to me with this group is uh, that they have very uh, generously and um, cordially kept me from doing anything stupid, which, is, uh, which I think is a major accomplishment, at least so far anyway. Um, so I, I don't even know if we'll have another opportunity this year to, to meet again, but uh, perhaps we will. But I, I just wanted to bring you up to speed on that. Um, now, Christine is leading the uh, policy group in, in any information systems, Al on operations research and Arif on uh, communications. And then Dean is leading this uh, sort of ad hoc group we, we formed a couple weeks ago to look into the town's uh, expense reporting, and which I noticed, by the way, these large jumps from um, the fiscal uh, 20 actual to the fiscal 21 budget were also showing up in the, the water and sewer budget that, that Grant uh, took us through today. So I think that that investigation um, is still pretty critical for a lot of reasons. 
so um, I would like to ask if if we could just get a verbal update on what's going on in these working groups. Uh, can we start with you, Christine? The um, policies and procedures working group has met um, several times, um, and the plan is to continue to meet. Uh, we view our um, task as twofold, um, the or two phases. Uh, the first phase is to gather together um, in one um, document what we've been referring to as a training manual, uh, which we hope will encapsulate all of um, what it is we do and how we do it um, and what we do it, uh, uh, what, what we do um, from um, what we're empowered to do by state law and town by law, the town manager act, how we organize our meetings, the little ins and outs, the very individual budget that <clears throat> we would want everyone to be knowledgeable, knowledgeable knowledgeable about. Um, it's um, a, a big bite, um, but we are working our way through it and people are, are um, taking parts of um, the project and working on them and, and we hope to, to keep it moving. Uh, what we were thinking is at some point when we have pretty much exhausted what we've been able to do, we would want to open it up to um, the, the entire finance committee to look at it and to review it and add to it and, and um, give us their thoughts. Then the second phase is once we've figured out what it is we do, it is to analyze what it is we may want to do in the future, what we should be doing in the future. Um, and we feel like Doing phase one is the necessary step to be able to uh, thoughtfully do phase two. And we see our, our task is, is somewhat uh, long-term. Uh, it won't be something that we'll be finished with within the next few months. Um, but um, at the same time, I, I think there's a desire in everyone's part to, to keep the ball rolling and to move on to phase two as soon as we can. I don't know if that um, fairly and accurately reflects what we've been doing. <clears throat> um, Al Jones, Annie, um, John Ellis, Shane, if you want to add anything to that, please do. Well, I, I would only say they're sort of inspired by the ATFC handbook that uh... Al Tosti has edited for many years, and this, you know, the, the, this training manual would be an adjunct to that, to the things specific to Arlington, like the 50% of free cash and how we come up with our OPEB number and all the, you know, little esoteric things that uh, aren't necessarily standard across the state. Okay. The well, town great. of Brookline also has a, uh, a handbook specific to Brookline. Might, might be interesting to look at. Good can, can you acquire a copy of that for us? <laughs> when, can we get a copy? <laughs> I guess it's, it's online. Okay. Great. Well, thank you, Christine. Uh, that's, that's, that's good. That's wonderful. Um, we, I hope when town meeting starts, you know, we'll have these uh, short meetings prior to town meeting and sometimes there's not too much going on there. So hopefully we can uh, follow up on, on some of these uh, these items at that time. So Annie, do you wanna give us a little update on the information systems? Yeah, how are the information systems doing guys? I love it, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so the, the committee hasn't met since we started um, you know, our regular meetings. I think what we've all been doing is just trying to observe how this has been going for you or the bumps in the road are what people struggle with um, and my theory is to reconvene everybody uh, post this most intense phase of uh, finance committee to review where we're at, see what we need to um, do to improve um, how all of this works and um, consider what it will be like to be back in person and what that might change. Um, and then to look at the longer term things that um, we're concerned about uh, coordination between us and the finance director and um, to make our reporting easy 
um, and to be sure that our numbers are always matching uh, across the two offices. Um, and then to look at, you know, what is the cumulative data and history for analysis that we want to maintain and um, use to enhance our reporting to the town and our understanding of um, sort of our financial past and our financial future. So. Thank you, Andy. I can tell you that your, your work, at least from my perspective, has been really productive. Actually, Liz, just an hour or two before the meeting tonight, Liz and I were working on a Excel spreadsheet together in real time on, on uh, SharePoint. So, you know, it, it works. It's really a productivity enhancer. So. No, I, I, but I, I have to give credit to the team. You know, I, I didn't, I, it's been really interesting to work with the group of people that I'm working with. Um, and, and all our different sort of perspectives and skill sets have been part of what has made this all click. So I got to give credit to um, Daryl and Grant and George and Alan for, um, uh, you know, making sure that we dot all our I's, cross all our T's and consider all the options. Great. Any questions or comments for Andy or the group? Charlie, if I, if I could just add, um sort of a human interest piece. Um, I'm actually working on a SharePoint rollout um, in my job, uh, which is interesting how these kind of cross-pollinate. I've been, <laughs> been able to use some of the things that I, we worked with on this rollout on this, this other rollout. Well, that's good, that's good. Okay, uh, Al, do you wanna comment on the operations research effort? Uh, to date, we have not met yet met. My plan is to look at how this year goes with the finance committee deliberations, and then to look at town meeting and what town meeting seems to focus more on, where the questions are. Uh, and then uh, the committee meets probably sometime in mid to late May uh, and starts discussing what would be a good research project, uh, sort of taking the lead from uh, the police uh, report uh, that was done so well by uh, Christine and, and uh, uh, Daryl and, uh, oh, who else is on that? Shane. Jonathan Wallach. Jonathan, okay. Uh, and, and following that pattern. But, um, you know, that took a lot of work. And uh, so I want to see and I'll be open to suggestions from the committee, um, but I'd like to see where the focus is, not only of the finance committee, but on the, uh, from the town meeting and then get cranking after the uh, town meeting dissolves. Okay. Um, on communicate, any, any questions for Al, suggestions? Yeah, just shoot me an email. Okay, um, on the communication side, Arif. Yeah, uh, I'd like to share my screen. I don't know if I can do it or I think I can. Uh, okay. So you can see this. So this was the, um, just a reminder as to what uh, Charlie had sent us. I've got Mary Margaret and uh, Alan Jones on the team. And uh, we've had a few conversations. It's Shailene, about, right? Isn't Shailene on the team? Shailene dropped off and oh. then uh, she hasn't re-engaged. She's an honorary member, I suppose. I'll put okay. you down as an honorary member. She was uh, present on it. Shailene, you're welcome to join. And I, I still need to convince uh, or tell Makaya that she's a member already, but I haven't uh, told her yet. <laughs> <laughs> but we need people. Uh, but these guys who've been with me are, well, uh, it's excellent team effort. Let me give you a quick update. So on the recruiting side, we recruited Mikai and we'll bring her on this team as well, if she's willing, uh, of course, uh, we don't twist arms too much. Sure. Um, but thank you. And, and thank you, of course, for Annie for introducing her and all the rest. So, so that story continues. On the recruiting side, we had started some conversations with the Arlington Art Links, but we've put that on hold because I think our recruiting efforts for currently have been satisfied, so that's okay. But there are other efforts that we are putting underway that will that will help us in the long run because recruiting is a long long term process. Um, so I'll get to that in my point three. In the point two, really, what I want to point out is education. 
And as you know, George Kosher, George Kosher did a ter terrific job of explaining the long range planning discussion that he presented Feb 24th. And we believe that bringing that message out into the town and helping them understand the implications of that is very important. I have a typo. I hate typos, sorry. Um, so to have uh, George uh, and with his permission, what we, uh, we are planning on doing is having a Q&A style video interview with ACMI's James Milan. So instead of George Kosher just uh, you know, uh, presenting it as a lecture, it's uh, probably better done as an uh, Q&A. So this, this is uh, being coordinated and uh, perhaps uh, Alan, myself and uh, Mary Margaret and George have to get together and, uh, and push a bit more on this, but we want to get this done before town meeting so that it can be posted and, uh, and people can be educated around that. So that's one of the efforts. The other bigger piece is really, how do, how do we get the word out and for people to get to know us? And uh, there are various efforts around that. Uh, I give full credit to Mary Margaret for putting together a number of questions which we are going to put together into a survey, which we'll send to all of you. And I think the survey is important because it will help us understand why did we join? What are the reasons for staying on this committee, et cetera? And this, uh, once we have that, it can serve as a cheat sheet as you and I go around town and talk to people and get them to understand FinCom or get them excited about being part of FinCom. Um, that can serve as a cheat sheet as to, we can point to you know, members on this, uh, on this committee and say, look, such and such joined and, and went on to become such and such and did amazing things. And you guys are all awesome. So uh, it's, this will be easy. So, and then of course we can also bring to light some of the challenges. Mary Margaret is a really a, a challenge and a problem solver. So she brings forth a lot of challenges and I'll let her put that into the survey as well. It's not easy, we all know. We spend a lot of time and effort and nobody gets uh, quote unquote paid and that's understood. But for others, it's hard to understand and as to why we do this. So perhaps highlighting that is important. Finally, one of the idea, the other ideas that we've come up with and we need to execute on is having, we've got these terrific personalities that I'm looking at right now and all of you need to be highlighted um, and, uh, and to get the word out for people to know us. We are not these bad people, but uh, we all have backgrounds, both personal and professional, and we have reasons for being here and perhaps using James Milan and using a series. I know Annie's done some, some videos. I've watched them great, with great intent and, uh, and have been amazed. So we will bring it to Annie. <laughs> I like pumping people up. I'm in a good mood. Um, there was a very few, but, <laughs> but anyways, uh, the, you know, the point being that uh, we've got, uh, I, I don't want to name the names. Every one of you is, uh, has got uh, terrific backgrounds and I'd love to have each one of us speak and and be highlighted and perhaps we can make it into a monthly series of some sort. So that's underway. So that's sort of the things that we've been doing so far. And uh, we're trying to get into um, a cadence of meeting at least once every three or four weeks and, uh, and pushing forward. So that's our update. Thank you, Arif. Very interesting. Um, any comments or questions, observations for, for Arif? Okay, thanks, Arif. That's uh, pretty exciting and uh, good work with uh, Makaya. I, I, th <laughs> I think it's pretty clever the way you recruited her and then you trapped her into the communications working group, you know, in public. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dean, do you have any comments on your uh, expense analysis group? Um, not much at the moment. We were, um, the, the plan is for our, our four person group to meet internally to get our ducks in a row. And then, um, then we'll go forward and meet with town management. Um, admittedly, it, the first step got slowed down by me because after we scheduled a meeting, I had to cancel it because of my own schedule. So our, our hope, my hope is over the next couple of weeks, you know, we can get back together, have our internal meeting, and then we'll be able to meet with the town's management. Okay, good. Well, uh, thank you everybody for, uh, you know, giving us a little feedback and insight into that. I think, I think it's all pretty exciting. Um, the, only, uh, the only comment I'll make is that um, 
uh, I think Andy started with, and I'm not trying to pump you up, Andy, you know, uh, but you, you were the first one on this uh, information systems thing. And uh, you've set a pretty high bar because I think you're changing the way we we're all working and the things we're doing. So, and I don't, I know I don't just mean you. I mean you and you and your colleagues there. So, it's it's great stuff. Okay, it's pretty. It's uh, sort of late. It's twenty to ten. Um, I don't think there are any more items that I have to put before you tonight. Um, we got a lot done. Um, I think we're going to have to have a meeting on Monday evening for two reasons. One is we need to go, we need to vote the um, water sewer budget. And secondly, I am hoping that we have some feedback and some resolution or some direction on the uh, school uh, budget. And, um, you know, we'll see. I don't, I, it's, I'm completely, uh, uh, yeah. You know, I'm not in the middle of it. I don't know where, where it's all going right now, but we'll see what happens. Mr. Um, Chairman? Yes, Dean. It's Dean. So I think we'll be ready on Monday for the school budget. It'll probably be kind of close. So Shane, Shailene, and I are scheduled to meet with the school budget subcommittee on Monday at, I'm going to say four. Sounds like it's about the time. So we'll meet with them from like four to five. Um, I have like a super hard stop because I have soccer practice for my kid at 5.30 and I'm the coach, so I kind of have to be there. <laughs> and then um, and then at 7.30, I'll be here. So hopefully Shane right. and Shailene can carry I the water. To, I hope you get something to eat in the, in the interim. That's why I shut the camera off for like two minutes during every session. Right. <laughs> so, um, yes. Oh, in, uh, Mr. Chirkwell. Yes. Mr. Chair, just um, I just wanted to mention putting my Dr. Doom uh, mask back on. Uh, everyone should Google Belmont override, and uh, oh, <laughs> what uh, uh, Be Be Belmont uh, uh, turned down a six six and a half million dollar override yesterday by twelve percentage points. Yeah, but they're Belmont. I'd say you no. busted on my hometown. They also yeah, vetoed a lovely own. vocational high school. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think there are things to learn by looking at the yes site and the, the, the yes website, the no website, and the finance committee. Very long mm -hmm. explanatory document. So, um, the Dr. Doom aside, um, I, I am um, I am hopeful that there's going to be some uh, dialogue between uh, town management and school management on some of these uh, budget issues, and I don't know if that's going to result in anything productive by Monday night or not, but it may. And, um, and then we, we also, uh, you know, Dean and, and uh, Sean, uh, Shane and Shailene are gonna be um, digging into the, the, the facts behind the numbers and we'll get some feedback on that as well. So, and then uh, we'll do another scan uh, just to make sure we've covered all the articles to make sure that uh, the ones that, you know, this will be basically Peter does a great job at this, um, making sure that we've voted them. That if if we're if we're not if we haven't voted them, there must be no reports or whatever. Um, but that that would sort of wrap us up. Now on the 14th, we expect uh, by the 14th we expect to have the House Ways and Means um, feedback on the state budgets, and that'll determine. Uh, basically the first cut of state aid that's coming back uh, into the budget that will inform um, you know where we stand and it's also going to be information for the long range planning committee meeting which I think is scheduled for the 16th so um, I, I just please keep that reserved as well uh, the 14th of uh, April and then um, I have asked a, a few of you to participate in some support in developing the uh, the the um, finance, finance report to town meeting, and we're gonna to start to accelerate that work over the next couple of, couple of days. Because town meeting is coming up, uh, votes on Saturday, everybody should go out and vote. And, um, and town meeting is on, is it the 26th or the 28th of? 26th. 26th. Monday the 26th, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're, we're coming up to town meeting time. So we have to, we have to get cracking on the uh, 
Finance Committee when we start the town meeting. Um, that about covers it for me. Any, anybody else have any inputs or comments? Yes. yes. I just I just want to comment on election day. Yes. Remember the polls open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. A town elections if they're an hour later than normal. So yes. it's 8 a.m. 8 p.m. Okay. Thank you for that. That's interesting. Uh, Peter, you wanted to say something. Yes, I do. Um, I'm sorry to, to have been late today. Kind of a long story, but anyway, um, was was uh, Grant the first speaker? Yes. Grant, Grant, uh, Grant. We immediately after uh, uh, taking roll call, um, any any volunteered to be recording Secretary Pro Tem, yeah. and uh, probably took some minutes. And I'll then, send you my notes, Peter. Okay, that'd be great. And then um, we went into the water sewer budget. Okay. Thank you. All right, Mr. Chairman. Yes. So, with since we do have eleven minutes left or twelve minutes left, would now be a good time to make my annual motion regarding cleaning up clerical errors in the budget in the budget book? I mean, in the uh, presentation. I, I think that that would be in order. Yeah. All right. I'll I, I wrote it down. Um. So moved. When putting together the 2021 Finance Committee report to town meeting, the committee authorizes its chair with the approval of two vice chairs to correct all clerical and administrative mistakes that are causing the overall budget to be out of balance without having to report back to the full committee. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. Okay, so um, I have to take a vote, I'm sorry. I have a question, I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead, Peter. Uh, I, I muted myself. Uh, Dean, good. I'm not too good at shorthand. Could you send me what you just wrote? That's why I wrote it down. So I was just emailing it to you. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. On the motion uh, made, in, was there a second? Second. Second. Okay. So the motion made by uh, Dean and seconded with respect to uh, correcting the. Um, uh, budget uh, documents going into the annual town meeting. Uh, we'll take a vote. Grant Gibbion? Aye. Aye. Uh, Shane Blundell? Yes. John Ellis? We lost him. Okay. Um, Makaya? Yes. Mary Margaret? Yes. Arif? Yes. Arif? Yes. Uh, Jonathan? Yes. Peter? Yes. Shailene? Yes. Uh, Daryl? Yes. Uh, John Deist? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. Annie LaCourt? Yes. Alan Tosti? Yes. George Koser? Yes. Christine Deschler? Yes. Dean Carmen? Yes. And David McKenna? Yes. Thank you. That's the unanimous vote on Dean Carmen's motion, uh, which he has read and uh, will be in the minutes. Okay. I think a motion to adjourn is in order. So moved. So moved. Any, any objection? Hearing no objections, we're adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank Good evening, you. everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.